So, so you ask yourself about compliance and you, and you think through, for an organization, where does compliance come from? My view of that, quite honestly, is that it comes from the men and women who work at the company. I firmly believe that it's the intent of all workers to do an honest day's labor for an honest day's pay and to be straightforward with the people that they deal with. But it's the whole notion of empowering the men and women of the organization to do what they want to do. And that really comes at the tone of the top. And it's essential that you set that stage and do all the things that you can to see to it that you provide them the opportunity and the freedom to speak their mind. So when you have an opportunity to manage an organization like this, you ask yourself, why would you do that? Why would you set the stage for a compliant uh, organization that spends a great deal of time, energy, and focus on seeing to that you do that? And the answer to it is really quite simple. It is in the best interest of your shareholder. Because the cost of non-compliance versus the ease of being compliant is clearly a demonstrable difference in how much a company may spend. I went to my first safety meeting. We had lost, we are the biggest operator on the Mississippi River, the inland uh, waterways. We had lost an employee who fell off the front of a barge at the, uh, with a tug behind it. So we're talking about this fatality. And it was every year we'd had a fatality for a number of years. And finally the safety manager says, well, this meeting's over with at 9.30, so let's go. And, and this was my first safety meeting as the new CEO. And I said, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here until we get to the bottom of this because this is a management error. This is not the employee should have known not to go out without a rope on him. He should not have been out on the front of the barge, but he was. And there was no communication a football field long from the tug to the front of the barge where he was. And after about an hour and a half, people began to realize that, geez, this is really different. What we're going to do here in safety is really different. In three of the last four years, we have had no fatalities at American Electric Power Company. 25% of our bonuses are lost if we have a fatality. We are serious about safety, and this company knows we're serious about safety. And the union workers know we're serious about safety, and they work harder because of it. My shareholders benefit, and more importantly than anything, a family isn't so negatively affected by the loss of a loved one or the loss of a provider. Those things are critically important. So that's it. That to me, that's what it's all about. It's to the best interest of your investors. It's to the best interest of your employees. It's to the best interest of the reputation of your company. And I'm not saying here, and I surely wouldn't stand here in front of you to say we're done. We're never done. But we're surely making progress in trying to protect the name of American Electric Power for the benefit of the folks who work there, who retired from there, and who invest in that company.